All right, good morning to, to each of you. I'd like to continue looking at John 10 and the lessons that we have. We've been talking about Jesus was a good shepherd, and we've been looking at the qualities of the shepherd. And then we've talked about the qualities of leadership. I'd like to talk about the qualities of sheep now. And, and this is in relation to us following the good shepherd and the chief shepherd. And what are, what are the things that define who sheep are? And I would like us just, let's turn to John 10. I'd like to read this. Uh, I'd like to actually just recite this together again, not recite it or read it. Um, John 10, 1 to 16. And we want to look at some things in this passage now that actually relate to sheep. And Jesus has calls us sheep many times. And I'd like to just... Just look at, look at some of the things that, that we can glean from this portion of Scripture. So, all together, let's, why don't we stand and we'll read this, these uh, 16 verses together and then just remain standing and we'll have a word of prayer. All right? All together. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out, and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth. Because he is not, and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for this. This day, I thank you for this portion of Scripture, and I thank you, Lord, for the things that are here that we can learn and you can teach us. Lord, I, I just pray now that you'd be with us for the next few moments as we look at this passage and we think about the qualities of sheep. Lord, guide our thoughts. Lead us in the way you'd have us to go. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you can be seated. So when we think about the qualities of sheep, and we think about these these verses that we just that we just read. What are some things that come to your mind? What is representative of sheep in this passage? Okay, yes. Okay, well, let's go, let's just look at, I want to look at these three verses in, in John 10. Verse 3, to him the porter openeth, the sheep hear his voice, he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. When he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, 
but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Okay. So, what do sheep? They know their master's voice. Okay, they know their master's voice. Okay. They hear his voice. They could hear lots of voices, but they also know his voice. What else do sheep do? Okay, the sheep follow. All right. And why do they follow? I'm sorry? They do. They need care. But they follow him because they know his voice. That's, that's, the, that's the part that is fascinating. C.H. Spurgeon, I was reading a message that, that he had given. He was... Back, preacher back in the 1800s, and he said this, it's been very properly observed that there are two marks on Christ's sheep. One is on their ear, and the other is on their foot. Okay? And I, I was fascinated by that as I, as I thought about it. One is on their ear, and one is on their foot. So, what are the marks on the ear? All right? The sheep hear his voice. That's one mark. Okay? Another mark is the sheep know his voice. I'd like to play a little I'd like to play a little video clip. And Okay, hopefully you can hopefully you can hear this. Okay, let's see if I can find this now. All right, y'all listen carefully. That clip spoke volumes to me as I was preparing for this message. Come here, sheep. Come here, sheep. We're sheep. Christ made that connection. God has placed His mark on our ears. These sheep heard their master's voice. And what did they do? They came immediately. They knew his voice. And that's a word picture that's worth 10,000 words to me. I mean, that message, that message is so loud and clear. That's the quality of a sheep. That's the quality. If we are going to follow our, the good shepherd, this is how we should respond. The next mark on the ear is they don't know the voice of a stranger. I dare say if I would have been up there calling, saying, here sheep, they would have kept grazing and they wouldn't have cared one bit. And so as I was thinking about this, some of the one of the things that we talked about this morning are how do we hear from God? And I think about this: what are we as God's people are created relational? God actually made us that way. He wants to have a relationship with us. That means He communicates with us; we communicate with Him. What are the roadblocks that keep that from happening? You know, I, I, I had to... It, it, it's, this is actually one of the things that is mentioned by Christians the most. 
how can I hear from God? Or why can't I hear from God? Scripture is pretty clear that there are things that are roadblocks. And, and I've got a list that I'm not going to be able to get through today. So this is going to be, this is going to continue on. But known sin in my life is going to cause me not to hear the voice of my shepherd. It's going to be a roadblock to hearing the voice of my shepherd. says this in Psalms, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. It's not even open for debate. If, if, I, if I'm going to have sin in my life, if I'm going to regard iniquity, if I'm going to be going after things that are against God, He's not going to hear me. So I won't be able to hear His voice. That's, that is a given. Another thing, uh, another verse, Colossians 1.21, and we had talked about this when we were going through Colossians. This is, Paul is saying, you being in time past alienated and enemies in your mind, in your evil works. You're not going to hear from God if you're engaged in evil works. If you're engaged in, you're going to be alienated. You're going to be enemies if your mind is engaged in evil works. A roadblock, known sin. This is, you will not be the sheep that, that move immediately to their master when they call. So when God calls us, are we obedient? Another verse, Isaiah 59, Your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. That's a roadblock to hearing the voice of the shepherd. There's, there's more that, that I want to look at. And this is, if you will, let's turn to Galatians. I'm going to, I'm going to put it up here. So Galatians 5, 16 to 26, and you can follow along. I, I, I put this in the, uh, in the New King James, but I think it's, it's good for us to think about. These are things that keep us from hearing the voice of the shepherd. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident. And these are the things that if you have these in your life, you will, you will not hear from God. You cannot hear the voice of the shepherd. Known sin. And this is what I want us to... Think about adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. You will not be the sheep being able to hear your master's voice. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. So I'd like to just look at this list just a little bit. These, these items on this list are things that we commit. All right? Adultery. Improper sexual relations between married people who are not husband and wife. Okay? That's adultery. Fornication. Improper sexual behavior between unmarried people. Uncleanness. What are the kind of things that just provide dirt and filth in our life? Lewdness. They would go together. Idolatry. 
We talked about that in our Sunday school lesson. Idolatry is having something that's bigger than God in our life. That's going to hinder us from hearing the voice of the shepherd. Sorcery, being involved in witchcraft. What about hatred? Is there anyone I hate? Is there anyone that I don't... That. What about contentions? These are all things that we do, we harbor in our heart, and it keeps us from hearing the voice of the shepherd. Jealousy. This, this is kind of a, a heart function, but I can't hear the voice of God if I have this in my heart. We're not going to be like those sheep that can hear the voice of the shepherd. Jesus said that that's the mark of my sheep. The, sh the shepherd calls his sheep and they follow him for they know his voice. That's the that's what about outbursts of wrath? Having anger in our heart. What about selfish ambitions? Talked about that a little bit. Things that I do just for me, just to give me a help me look good or Maybe I want people to pay attention. Selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, getting involved in things that are not true according to the Scripture. These are all a list of sin that is going to separate us from the kingdom of God. These are also sins that are going to keep us from hearing the voice of the shepherd. Envy. Murderers. Drunkenness. We're not going to hear the voice of the shepherd if this is part of our life. Revelries. I mean, last night was probably a time of revelry in the town of Moultrie. They had a prom that took place this weekend and there was probably lots of parties and lots of drunkenness. People can't hear from God when that's their when that's their practice. And and the like, which I tell you, those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. You will not be able to hear the voice of the shepherd if you do these things. The good thing about it is the but that comes in there. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. There's no law against that. But those things are going to give you an ear. You're going, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make your hearing better to hear the shepherd. I want to talk about, I want to also talk about sins that are, let's see if I can... Find my notes. They've disappeared. Okay, those are all sins that we commit. There's also another sin that separates us from the voice of the shepherd, and that's the sin of doing nothing. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. And we had looked at the, the, the I know that my, my wife had talked at the, the ladies, at the ladies, um, at the session, at the minister's meeting, she talked about the parable of the talents. And, and when you think about that, that is also sinful behavior that's going to keep you from hearing the voice of your shepherd. 
And I just, I'd like us just to think about that for just as though it's in Matthew 25 in this, in this story, the wickedness of doing nothing. is Matthew 25 and if, let's just let's just turn there I want to look at it just in closing a few a few of these verses just kind of refresh our memory of this this parable of the talents so the talents were given they were issued there was there were there were five talents given. There were another in verse fifteen, and to another two, and to another one. The the two men who were given the five talents and the two talents, they went and doubled their money, if you will. The other man went and buried his in the in the dirt. He he was given something good from God or from his master, and he went and hid it. The parallel is we've been given something good from God and He has given us His Son to die on the cross for our sins. We have grown up with an amazing amount of blessings. What is it, what, what is it like? What is it worth to grow up in a home where both mom and dad are your biological parents. We've been given that. What is it like to grow up in a home where your parents are not involved in these things of Galatians 5 that are written down here? The drunkenness and the revelings and the fighting and the, and the carousing and the carry on. We've been given that. But what about the sin and the wickedness of doing nothing? I have a little quote here that if a man wants to destroy the happiness and tranquility of his home, he need not abuse his wife physically. All he has to do is leave her alone. Never show any signs of affection. Never express any appreciation for good meals and clean clothes. Just do nothing. And by so doing, the man will destroy his home. If a man wants to destroy the character of his children, he does not have to set up an aggressive program. It's not necessary for him to buy obscene and pornographic literature, bring it home, scatter it about the house in order to poison his cho children's mind and destroy their character. All he has to do is leave them alone. Do not bother finding out who their friends are. Do not know where they go at night or when they come in. Do not know or care what they do. Just ignore them. Leave them alone, and thereby a man can destroy the character of his children and his household. What about a farmer? If a farmer wants to destroy his crop, it's not necessary for him to plow it up and plant weeds in the field. All he needs to do is sit back in the rocking chair and pass hours away. Just do nothing. Day after day, ignore seed time and harvest. Thereby a man will lose and destroy his crop. It costs us to do nothing in our life. What about our church brotherhood? If you want to destroy the church, just do nothing. If you want to hear the voice of God, if you want to hear Him giving you things to do and, and, and speaking into your life, You cannot have sin in your heart. If you want to destroy your church, you don't even have to say bad things about it. Just do nothing. Try to miss as many services as you can. When you come, try to do as little as possible. Don't pray, don't give, don't care about others. Try to be gone as many weekends as possible. That's the way you do nothing. There is a serious price. But most importantly, you do not hear from the chief shepherd if that's your, if that's your experience.
If you want to hear the voice of God, known sin in your life should be confessed and repented of and, and flee from it. There is a price for letting sin remain. But eventually, if you persist in it, it, it will destroy you. But in the meantime, you don't get to hear the voice of God. And I believe He wants to speak to us. And he wants, he wants us to speak to Him. He wants us to have a relationship. This picture of these sheep that came when their master called is so compelling to me. That's who I want to be when God calls. When His voice speaks, I'm, immediate, I'm immediately willing to answer. And I guess... On that, on that remark, I, I guess you parents that are still in the midst of child training and, and it seems like maybe sometimes those days just, just go without end. And you prepare them today to hear the voice of God. I dare say that any sheep that would have been bought at the sale would not naturally have known how to hear their master's voice. But when they are part of a flock that's used to hearing the master, and they get used to it as well, sense the master's love and appreciation and care for them, they start, they start becoming part of this group that's running to, to the call. You prepare your children to hear God by teaching them to obey. It's such, a, it's such a beautiful thing when, like Samuel, can say, Speak, for thy servant heareth. And, and that's, that's our role as parents, to, to prepare our children to hear the voice of God. Anyway, there's, uh, let's, let's close. Let's pray. Lord, I thank You for this day, and I thank You for your, your love to us. And Lord, the fact that You are the Good Shepherd. You care for Your sheep. You care for Your children. You, you want us to have a relationship with You. Lord, I just pray that You would speak to us. Lord, help us to hear Your voice and come at Your call. Lord, help us to have the mark on our ear of Your sheep. God, as I pray, and lead us through this coming week. In Jesus' name, Amen.